So you're in the field of maybe kinesiology or you're interested in exercise and fitness and movement and you're trying to think about a different career in the future. So you might be wondering, maybe I want to become an exercise physiologist or maybe I want to become a physical therapist. So in this video, we are going to compare and contrast the differences between exercise physiologists and physical therapists in these five categories. So the first one is going to be job duties. The second one's going to be schooling, the cost of schooling, the work environment, and the salary and job outlook. Now I wanted to talk about these five main things so that you can gain the knowledge and learn the differences between an exercise physiologist and a physical therapist so that you can make an educated decision as to which career field that you want to get into. So we're just going to jump right into it, Lego. Alright, so exercise physiologist. Now those of you who don't know what an exercise physiologist is, they are the ones that are, you might have seen like, you know, in those videos, those people are wearing like those masks, and they're biking, and then they're blowing into some kind of like a mask or a tube, right? Or maybe they're on a treadmill doing a stress test with a bunch of like EKG uh, lines and uh, monitors on them. So exercise physiologists are the ones that administer that type of stuff. Now, of course, that's just a little bit of their job duties, but I'm just trying to give you a visual as to like what type of person and job we're looking at here. Now, exercise physiologists, what they are specialized in is how the body responds to exercise, okay? Physiologically, how does our body change when we exercise? For example, when you run, your heart rate goes higher and your breathing increases, right? That is a physiological response to exercise. So exercise physiologists are specialized in that field so that they can make appropriate decisions when helping other people. So in general, exercise physiologists develop fitness and exercise programs that help patients recover from chronic diseases, whether that's cardiovascular diseases or pulmonary or lung diseases, and they help with body composition and improve different parts of the body, whether that's flexibility or strength. Now, a physical therapist, on the other hand, can evaluate and diagnose patients with movement disorders or different musculoskeletal. Now, a physical therapist, on the other hand, can evaluate and diagnose patients with different types of diseases or disorders, whether that's movement disorders, movement dysfunctions, musculoskeletal or neurological dysfunctions, and things like that. Now, a physical therapist, in the way that they help people, is that they treat others with therapeutic exercise, neuromuscular re-education, manual therapy, different scientific agents like ultrasound, mechanical traction, and ultimately will help a patient return them back to their prior level of function. They can also help assist patients and evaluate them if they need different assistive devices like power wheelchairs, electric scooters, help them with gait training, whether they need a axillary crutches, right? Or walkers and things like that as well. Now, physical therapists will not use different diagnostic tests for their treatment, whether that's using a metabolic uh, calculator, right? Through maybe a VO2 max test, uh, Physical therapists don't use 12 lead EKGs or anything else like that as well. Now exercise physiologists can definitely do all those things and they will create a workout program or an, ex or an exercise program to help patients recover back to their prior level of function. Now physical therapists can also create exercise programs but it will be more like 
a patient will come in and physical therapists will treat them with exercise and be with them on a daily basis to help them to recover as well. But this is where exercise physiologists and physical therapists kind of merge a little bit because they both do that same thing where the patient will come in and they'll work with them whether that's through cardiac rehab or exercises so that they can return back to their prior level of function. So for an example, a doctor might order a stress test for a patient and then ask the exercise physiologist to create a workout program so for them to follow so that they can get back into rehabbing their heart. So that's something an exercise physiologist can do. So let's talk about schooling. Now, as you know, for a physical therapist, you need to have a doctorate of physical therapy. So that means you have to go through your bachelor's and then your three years of doctorate as well for a total of at least seven years, but it might take somewhere between seven to nine years to complete your whole entire schooling career. Now for an exercise physiologist, typically you will only need a bachelor's degree. Now bachelor's, of course, it, takes, it differs for everybody, but on average it takes about four years, right? Now in your bachelor's degree, you wanna be in a major that is related to exercise physiology. So this can be kinesiology, exercise science, you can major in exercise physiology, maybe cardiac rehab, sports nutrition, and all of those different related fields. Now, in order to be a, a exercise physiologist, you need additional certifications. Now this is not regulated in uh, many places in the United States, except several different states, but exercise physiologists do not need a license. Meaning once, if you wanna to apply to become an exercise physiologist, all you have to do is apply, and if your employer requires you to have some certifications, then you can get that. But you don't need to sit in for a nationwide licensing exam to become a exercise physiologist. Now, let me talk about a little bit of the extra certifications that might make you a little bit more marketable as an exercise physiologist. Now, of course, for the most part, most employers will require exercise physiologists to have a basic life support and an advanced life support certification. But in addition, there are some additional certifications that come from different providers and companies. And two, there are two main companies that hold certifications in exercise physiology. The first one will be American Society of Exercise Physiologists ASEP and also American College of Sports Medicine ACSM. Now these two companies will hold certifications for exercise physiologists. Now American Society of Exercise Physiology will require you just to go through the program and pass the exam and then you get certified in it. Now you also have to have a bachelor's for this. Now ACSM American College of Sports Medicine has three different certifications and three different levels that you can go through to have a exercise physiologist uh, certification. So the first level is what they call an EPC, which is a certified exercise physiologist. And all you need is a bachelor's for this and just pass the exam. Then the second level would be a certified clinical exercise physiologist, which is a CEP. And this one you're required to have a bachelor's and four to 600 hours of supervised clinical experiences, okay? And then the last level is what they call a registered clinical exercise physiologist, which is RCEP. And you need to have a master's degree in exercise physiology and also four to 600 hours of supervised clinical experiences in order to receive this certification. Now, of course, with each level, you will be more marketable to different employers. And of course, you can have a higher pay and you can justify that and um, uh, negotiate that when you're applying as well. Okay, so the cost for schooling. 
Now, exercise physiologists will only require a bachelor's degree. So whatever program you get into, it will vary whether it's a public or a private institution, right? So if you're an in-state public school education, on average, it'll be about $38,000. If you're out of state, it'll be an average of $84,000. And if you're a private institution, it'll be an average of $140,000 for your undergraduate degree. But once you get that, then you can become an exercise physiologist. And of course, if your employer requires those extra certifications, like I mentioned before, then you have to also work for those different certifications and pay for those as well. Now, a physical therapist will require a bachelor's degree, which will cost, like I mentioned earlier, and also a doctorate degree, which will cost an average of about $110,000, whether it's a private or a public school education. Of course, they differ and it's cheaper for a public school, but on average, it will be $110,000 for tuition alone. All right, so work environments. Exercise physiologists can work in several different places. Typically, they will work in conjunction with another healthcare professional that went through a higher education, whether that's a physician, physician assistant, um, different rehab facilities like with physical therapists rehab, a occupational therapist rehab, or speech therapist rehab. So they can work in those places. They might work in hospitals or in physician offices in an outpatient place, not in the hospital. And sometimes they are also, I've seen them that they are also working in government places and also like the military as well. Because the military wants to see, hey, where is this person at with their uh, exercise? What, is, what are the markers and measurable things that we can check to see how much, uh, how fit they might be? right? So exercise physiologists can work in those environments. Physical therapists can work in a variety of different environments. They can typically be broken down into two different categories. One is an inpatient and the other is an outpatient. Now inpatient is going to be somewhere like the hospital, skilled nursing facilities, or convalescent homes. And then outpatients are going to be outside where the patients are more stable that are not in those places and they will have different specialties in those areas, whether that be orthopedics, pediatrics, neurology, and all of that kind of stuff. Physical therapists can also work in home health, right? They can work as travel physical therapists and travel to different states. Uh, they could specialize and really hone in on like aquatics therapy, hippotherapy where they're working with horses, and so much more. So there's a lot of opportunity to work in different environments as a physical therapist when compared to a exercise physiologist where you're kind of limited in the places you can work. All right, so let's talk about money and salary and the job outlook. Now I got this information from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and from the time that I filmed this video, it's from between 2019 to 2029. Now, exercise physiologists on an average will make a median salary of $49,000 and a job outlook of 11% growth in the next 10 years. Now, physical therapists, on the other hand, will make an average median salary of $89,000 and a growth of 18% in the next 10 years. All right, you guys, so I hope you guys learned a lot of information between the two different jobs and everything that I covered, you can utilize to help make some good decisions in choosing the two different careers. Now, personally, when I was an undergrad, I actually wanted to choose between these two careers and that was on the top of my list. It's like, do I want to be an exercise physiologist? Because I was super passionate with exercise and how the physiological changes happen when we exercise. Or do I want to become a physical therapist where I can treat people with exercise, right? So I made the decision to go down the path of physical therapy. But if I were to go back and if I didn't want to go through the schooling, hey, maybe exercise physiology would be a great profession. 
You can always work as an exercise physiologist and then work on the side and do other different jobs like work as a personal trainer, group fitness instructor, sports coach, and things like that. And by having that exercise physiology background, you can really utilize uh, your expertise to help your clients or your athletes increase in their performance as well. So if I didn't want to go through all of that schooling for physical therapy, I for sure would have done exercise physiology and especially considering the salary and the job outlook of growth of 11% in the next 10 years, hey, that's a pretty good profession you should get into. So I hope this video helped inspire you to make an educated decision when choosing between an exercise physiologist and a physical therapist. All right, you guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you gain value from this video, please share this video with a friend so they can gain just as much value. And give this video a like if you liked it and comment below if you have any more questions. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end, you guys. I thank you and love you so much. Stay lifting, stay aloha. God bless you. Have a great one, you guys.